burns upon my spine, my mouth is broken, arms are bound, alarms are sound and harms around, trouble comes, charms are bound, solitary single, phantom limbs are tangled. He is Juno Award winner Buck 65. You may also know him as the host of CBC Radio 2's Drive. Uh, joining me now is Rich Turfry, and you are also going to be adding author to your resume with the latest and greatest, Wicked and Weird, The Amazing Tales of Buck 65. Welcome this morning. Thanks. Uh, this book is out today, and it's pretty exciting because it's kind of a culmination of what you've been going through over the last few years with mm -hmm. your, your album, which was released last year, yep. and now the book. Tell me about that period of time in your life. Well, it's been busy. Yeah. Um, there were times uh, going back over the you know pre months of the previous year where I was working on this, the album, and you know writing a radio show every day. A lot going on. Those were busy days, um, and a lot of it, uh, a lot of this work sort of came on the heels of a divorce and sorting through that whole thing and just mm -hmm. trying to like figure it all out and work through it, and so. The album, you know, we were calling it a divorce album, mm -hmm. and so it's sort of a document of everything that happened after, and the book is sort of a document of everything that came before. So the two kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, I think of yeah. them as companion pieces in a way. Yeah. Uh, this must have been completely cathartic for you. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. For both the album and the book. Specifically, the book is interesting because um, the way you read it is, what is fact, what is fiction? Because the way it's written is uh, so interesting. Mm -hmm. How much of it is fact and how much is it, of it is embellished, I'd say? Um, I would say that, um, you know, in each part of it, each anecdote in, in the book, it all starts with, mm -hmm. at the very least, a kernel of truth. Mm -hmm. But also, in most cases, you know, there's some, uh, you know, flexing going on to, um, you know, em em embellish and heighten and mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. Um, I certainly wanted to write the most entertaining book that I could uh, write. And um, I, I thought about just, you know, going with pure fiction, but there was enough interesting material in my own life to mm -hmm. draw from that I thought, well, I got to use this stuff. You know? Well, I read that you, you would rather be entertaining than boring. Yeah. Is that that's fair to say? Always, yeah. In fact, uh, throughout my life, that's been my main mo. That mm -hmm. I just never wanted to be bored. So I was always, I've always made sure that I'm doing something, but usually two or three things yeah. on the go at any given time. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so it was a few months ago, and, and you know where the headlines were out there that you put out a Facebook post and kind of reached out to the public because you were sort of in an interesting period in your life. Where are you now? Now that this book is out there, the album's out there. You just finished touring across the U.S. How yeah. are things? Yeah, things are good. I mean, um, like I said, I started working on this record and the book to just sort of sort through all the feelings yeah. of of uh, having gone through a real tough thing, a divorce, as anyone who's been through it would know. It's, mm -hmm. it's a difficult thing. And I felt like I figured some things out, but not everything. Mm -hmm. And so finally, I, I felt that I had to take the last step and say, so look, here's the deal. Like, you know, this thing... Uh, fell apart. It was my own fault, and so I'm just, you know, looking for help and uh, a healthy way forward as best I can. And yeah. it's amazing the way people have risen to the occasion and have offered to help out and yeah. to share their stories and that sort of thing. And so, um, you know, it was a bad day the day I, I put that post out there just to mm -hmm. let people know how I was feeling. But things have been going a lot better since. Great. Now yeah. I want to talk about your three passions because yeah. we've got love. We got music, yeah. and we have baseball, which you know, if people don't know, you are a huge baseball guy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You actually threw out the first pitch at Wrigley Field last September. I did. That must have been a dream come true for you. It was. It was the thrill of my life, and I, I told myself, you, you see the video here. I told myself, when you get out there on the mound, take a moment. Mm -hmm. Take it all in, think about it. You want to remember each detail of this. But now it's amazing when I watch <laughs> it back, it looks like it happened so fast. Right. But I wanted to remember when I was out there all those hours in my backyard practicing and all those childhood dreams and to let that be the realization of mm -hmm. it. And I'll tell you, the thing I'll never forget is throwing that pitch, hearing it hit the gloves. I threw it pretty hard, you did. as you can see there. Pretty accurate. And uh, this big cheer went up, because I don't think people are used to seeing someone throw it quite so hard. No, people usually just lob it, it's right? usually a little lob, but I, I gave it a bit of gas, and I let <laughs> Valbuena, who caught it, I let him know I was going to bring it, and it got a nice cheer. It oh, you thrilled. brought it. If you want to read more about 
Uh, Rich Storfry's life about baseball, love, music, all of the above. This is on bookshelves now. You can also meet you. This is uh, happening. Yes. Uh, this is happening uh, on Monday, August the 17th at the Bram and Bluma Appel Salon. This is the Toronto Reference Library. Again, Monday, August 17th. Admission is free. Mm -hmm. A little bit of meet and greet. You'll be given a bit of a speech and you yeah. can hear all about his very interesting life. Thank you very much. Good to meet you. Nice to see you. And we're upstairs to you, Kev.